The Minnesota Commercial is based in the Midway area in western St. Paul. They serve over 150 route miles in and around the Twin Cities metropolitan area, along with operating a transload facility and an over-the-road truck line operation. Probably the most notable feature about this railroad is its use of its second-generation Dash 7 General Electric and Alco locomotives, including the last two Alco RS-27 locomotives in existence. Before we begin our look at the operations of this railroad, let's visit their headquarters in St. Paul. This is the original Minnesota Transfer Railway Building and Roundhouse. A modern addition was made to accommodate additional office space. Along with the business offices, this building also houses the Yardmaster's dispatching office and is the base for all the train crews. The nameplate of the original railroad is still in place on the outside of the roundhouse. On the other side, we catch a glimpse of the turntable and roundhouse stalls along with the sanding tower. The commercial has a dozen people on staff that maintains and rebuilds their locomotive fleet. We got a chance to see the crew turning B-23-7, number 1971, and roll it into its stall. This locomotive is a former Conrail unit and is one of eight B-23-7s the railroad owns. The commercial operates many jobs on a daily basis and we will follow several of them. The first stop is the Hugo job, also known as job number 19. This job, along with all others, originates at the commercial's main yard, located just north of the roundhouse and Amtrak station. The Hugo job runs on former Northern Pacific rails, which are owned by the BNSF and leased to the commercial. This job generally uses one of the commercial's very few EMD units. A former Santa Fe CF-7, which was purchased by the commercial in 1987, is the locomotive of choice for this job, along with the Bayport job, which we will see later. The CF-7 is even named for the city of Bayport. Starting at the west end of the commercial's yard, we catch the CF-7 shoving some tank cars into a yard track before leaving on the main line. After its switching is complete, the train crosses the BNSF's Midway sub at St. Anthony Junction and prepares to cross the BNSF's St. Paul sub at Park Junction. This section of track is the original Minnesota Transfer Main Line. The train will split off this line and onto the former NP tracks to Hugo shortly.
In Roseville, the Hugo job comes off the commercial's main line and on to the Hugo line at a point called Belt Line Crossing. The train is now heading due east and will turn to the northeast on its way to Hugo. This XNP trackage was a branch from the main line at White Bear Lake to Minneapolis. Industries served by the Hugo job include drywall supply in Little Canada. In White Bear Lake, they serve structural wood, St. Croix Valley hardwood, universal forest products, and polar plastics. And in Hugo, Schweeter's Lumber, 84 Lumber, and Norlake Services. In White Bear Lake, the crew set out the loaded center beam at Universal Lumber Products and is now taking the one box car to be set out at St. Croix Valley Hardwood, which is on the other end of the Y track. The train is now heading on to the former NP Main Line. This line was NP's main from St. Paul to Duluth. Much of this route is now abandoned, with the exception of a portion from North Branch to Hinkley, which is operated by the St. Croix Valley and can be seen in Minnesota's Railroads Volume 2. At the other end of the Y is MND Junction. Here the crew will pull the boxcar and cut it off in motion to allow it to roll onto the Y so that the crew can place the locomotive on the other end of the car for spotting at St. Croix Valley Hardwood.
As the crew continues its work, we move ahead into the heart of White Bear Lake. Here we see the restored 1935 Northern Pacific Railroad Depot that now houses the White Bear Lake Area Historical Society's exhibits, resource library, gift shop, and office space. The museum also offers railroad memorabilia and is a must to visit. Alongside the depot, a restored Northern Pacific caboose is also on display. Both the depot and caboose offer a great backdrop for the current operations of the Minnesota commercial. In Hugo, the train arrives at Nor Lake, which is located at the end of the line. This industry handles various products, including fuel oil. Here they will spot the loaded tank cars and pick up three empties. In 1998, the Minnesota Commercial and the City of Hugo jointly developed the new Hugo Industrial Park and was completed in 2004. Located in the park are Sweeters Construction, Norlake, 84 Lumber, and a team track for non-rail equipped customers in the area. With the train coupled together, the train shoves back to a runaround track just south of our location. At the runaround track, the crew has picked up an empty center beam flat car from 84 Lumber, which is just south of Norlake, and is now beginning its journey back to St. Paul.
Back at the depot in White Bear Lake, notice how close in proximity US Highway 61 is in conjunction to the tracks. This makes for some tight shooting space and plenty of traffic noise as the train heads past the depot once more. While the crew picks up two additional empty center beams from Universal Forest Products in White Bear Lake, we get ahead of the train as it passes the station sign at Roseville. We set up at the yard to catch the train's return. While waiting, a Union Pacific coal train that comes off the former Wisconsin Central via the Minnesota Commercial Line heads off the commercials track and on to the BNSF for the UP's yard in South St. Paul. This train had to wait for over two hours to come onto the BNSF and has caused a jam on the commercial. Two other jobs, along with the Hugo job, are behind this train waiting to come into the yard. The crews of all three jobs decided to tie their trains together to make crossing the BNSF at St. Anthony quicker. After the coal train clears, the first train leading the trio is the Hennepin job. This is one of two jobs that use an Alco locomotive. This rare RS-27 is used on this job daily. We will watch this locomotive in action on the Hennepin job later in the show. 
As the train stops, it disconnects from the Hugo train and continues into the yard. Meanwhile, the crew on the Hugo job comes to the switch leading to its yard track. Behind the Hugo train is job number 46, which is the belt job. This train works industries along the commercial's main line up to Fridley. It is led with number 75, which is a former cotton belt B36-7. Since the belt job made an appearance, let's go ahead and take a look at this train next. Job number 46 works industries on the original Minnesota transfer main line that extends from the commercial yards to industries in Roseville, New Brighton, and the north central suburb of Fridley. Starting at the yard once again, we see the Hugo job is tied onto the front of the belt job for its journey across the BNSF at St. Anthony. We are located on the Raymond Avenue Bridge. The yard is full of cars today, which is a common sight. The commercial interchanges with all railroads in the Twin Cities area and can see many transfers move daily. One of those transfer moves is coming into the yard prior to the two jobs departing. Job number 88, which is a transfer from BNSF's Northtown Yard, comes across St. Anthony and is led with the commercial's SF30-7 number 56. This train normally runs at night and is coming back late making a rare daylight appearance.
With number 88 clear, the two trains head out of the yard. One of the industries the belt job serves is bell pole located in New Brighton. Several cars of long utility poles make up this train today, heading to what is called the pole yard to be set out. Other industries on this line include hood flexible packaging in Roseville, wirehauser recycling in New Brighton, shearer lumber in Arden Hills, and in Fridley is commercial transload of Minnesota, warehouser companies Bardco Division, Murphy Warehouse, and Roland Marketing, which specializes in unloading potatoes. On another day, we catch the belt job approaching Park Junction with the addition of B23-7, number 40. We catch this same train again as it crosses Terminal Road in Roseville. Back to our original train, we find it slowing in preparation to work the industries at County Road D.
As the crew couples to the cars in the industry track, we can't help but notice how busy of a road they have to contend with when switching. As the crew finishes its work here, we jump ahead a little ways. We set up at the Diamond with the Canadian Pacific's Withrow Sub in New Brighton. This track is also the former Wisconsin Central Line to Owen, Wisconsin, now operated by the Canadian National. It is also here that the CN maintains a building for their train crews. To the north of the building is the Pole Yard. That is the location of Bell Pole. Even though this yard sits alongside the commercial's main line, it is actually owned by the Canadian Pacific, but is primarily used by the commercial. The train is now approaching the diamond, heading to do its switching in the yard. Relocating to the north end of the yard, we watch as the crew performs a couple switch moves. A maintenance of way crew that is working on the yard tracks takes a break while the train performs its work.
At the north end of New Brighton, the tracks run through Long Lake Park. It is here that the city's historical society has brought in this depot that was built in 1887 and was originally located south of New Brighton alongside the Belt Line tracks. It served three passenger trains from the Twin Cities and Duluth in its heydays. The depot was donated to the New Brighton Historical Society by the Sioux Line in 1982 and was moved here in 1990. The Society magnificently restored it, along with a Great Northern caboose and other equipment. Just north of the depot, the tracks split. The train is heading on the portion that leads to Fridley, while the other line heads to the now abandoned Twin Cities Arsenal plant a short distance from here. Only a portion of that line is still used to serve Shearer Brothers Lumber. Moving ahead to the end of the line in Fridley, we catch up to the train as the crew makes several switch moves. Industries served at this location are Willamette, Murphy Warehouse, and the commercial subsidiary Commercial Transload of Minnesota.
With the work here just about done, let's take a closer look at Commercial Transload of Minnesota. This 60,000 square foot climate controlled facility is located at the end of the Beltline, Maine in Fridley. Owned by the Minnesota Commercial, this building operates a transloading and warehousing operation specializing in steel and other bulk products. A 30,000 pound forklift and a 25 ton overhead crane move products from rail cars to over the road trucks. This operation gives the Minnesota Commercial's customers more options and conveniences when it comes to moving their products. CTM brings the economics of rail service to the many businesses that do not have rail sightings by using rail as far as possible and then local trucking with their own CTM truck lines to the doorstep. And while CTM handles a lot of steel, they can handle almost anything else, including heavy machinery, equipment, industrial products in boxcars or other types of rail cars. Let's watch as a truck is loaded with heavy steel coils. CTM has its own industry switcher. CTM-1 moves several cars in and out of the building, allowing the unloading of up to 20 rail cars a day. The switching moves are generally done at night, but the crew here has graciously offered to fire up the locomotive and move a set of cars in and out of the building for us to view in daylight hours. <laughs> CTM-1 is a former Canadian Pacific MLWS-6. It was acquired in 1999 and was rebuilt with a 350 horsepower Cummins engine along with footboard and remote control units.
as the crew uncouples the cars and parks the locomotive, we got a chance to see the footboard control panel. Back to the belt job. It is making one last move to pick up the cars that are heading back to St. Paul. On another day, we catch the train as it prepares to cross over the diamonds at Park Junction in St. Paul. The next job we follow is job number 17, also known as the Hiawatha job. This train works the elevators and industries along the former Milwaukee Road Line in South Minneapolis along the Hiawatha Avenue District. This track is currently owned by the Canadian Pacific and leased to the commercial. A portion of this line parallels the Metro Transit's light rail tracks that run from downtown Minneapolis to the Mall of America in Bloomington. For this segment, we ride along with the crew as well as capture trackside switching. Just as the crew finished picking up its cars in the yard, we pass the Amtrak station and cross over University Avenue, which is just north of the commercial's roundhouse facilities. The locomotive we are riding in today is number 1982, which is a former Conrail B23-7. Coming up to the roundhouse, we see the lineup of power, including the engines for the Northtown Yard transfer. The slug and the Alco C424 are used to switch the yard on a daily basis, which we will see later in the show. The train is now coming off the connector track and on to the ex-Milwaukee road line. As we roll along, the train crosses over Interstate 94. Milwaukee, we're coming. This junction leads to Passione Plastics. The commercial serves this industry a couple times per week, but not on today's train. Now we approach the bridge that crosses over the Mississippi River. This vantage point also gives us a great view of downtown Minneapolis.
Coming around the bend, we now parallel Hiawatha Avenue. Now that we are parallel to Hiawatha Avenue, we can see one of the light rail trains heading to the Mall of America. The crew is now at its first location, which is the Nokomis elevator. Here they will be switching a set of cars past the elevator in preparation for spotting the cars here later in the day. While waiting for the train, we get a glimpse at elevator T on the other side. This elevator has its own switcher. General Mills uses this engine to switch large unit trains in and out of the facility. The Minnesota Commercial is a scheduled railroad, with all cars being spotted to or pulled from industries within eight hours from receipt in most cases for maximum customer service and good service to their connecting carriers.
After the elevator has been switched, the crew is now spotting four empty gondolas for Leader Brothers scrap. Back at the Nokomis elevator, the crew will now pull the loads out of the industry loading track and spot empties in their place. Back on board, we roll further down the line to switch cars by the soon-to-be-demolished Purina Mill. Back on the ground, the 1982 works hard as it spots cars at the Atkinson elevator.
With the work complete, let's enjoy the sights and sounds of the ride back to the commercials roundhouse. Our next job we will follow is the Bayport job, also known as job number 15. This train takes the BNSF to Westminster Junction in St. Paul, where it will then head on to the Union Pacific's Altoona sub. The train will travel to Lakeland Junction, which is on the Minnesota side of the St. Croix River. Here they will head up the five-mile Stillwater lead to switch the Anderson Windows plant in Bayport. This job uses the CF-7 we saw earlier on the Hugo job. Electing to avoid rush hour traffic, we head out of the metro and set up east of Lake Elmo to catch the train at track speed on the UP's main line. After making a switch move to set a covered hopper in front of the engine, the train heads north on the spur, passing the marina south of Bayport. The train is now in Bayport and passes by the south end of the Anderson plant.
The commercial train is setting out the covered hopper for Daltec Plastics, which is north of the Anderson plant. At the same time, Anderson's own switcher rolls past us as it heads back to the engine house. Adjacent to Anderson Windows is the Northern States Power Plant, which uses coal brought in by the Union Pacific. The crew now shoves the inbound cars into Anderson and will then hook on to the St. Paul bound cars for its return trip. Before the shove back to the main line is made, the conductor places the Fred on the rear car and makes an air test. Hearing an UP freight calling on the radio, we head west to Lake Omo to capture it running past the restored elevator in town, along with the Bayport job heading back to St. Paul.
Now on the BNSF, we get one last look at the train as it ducks under the Western Avenue Bridge in St. Paul. Job number 52, which is known as the Hennepin Job, works industries along Hennepin Avenue in Minneapolis and along Highway 280 in St. Paul and surrounding areas. Although this is a relatively short route, the job uses one of two RS-27 locomotives in existence. We begin in the yard where we see number 316 making a few switch moves before heading on to the main line toward the Hennepin District. Let's watch and listen to this magnificent locomotive laboring in the yard.
With yard work complete, the crew heads to its first assignment. But before the train can cross at Park Junction, a BNSF freight heads east. With the diamond clear, the 316 shoves hard upgrade northbound. At the Broadway Avenue crossing, we catch the train making a switch move in the yard at Paper Kalmensen. There are several industries within this area, including Ipsco Steel, Ratner Steel, and Twin City Reload, which specializes in lumber. The next move is on the north end near Beltline Crossing. The crew is making a set out at Lube Tech. As the engineer continues to shove the cars, we notice how much of a grade the train must encounter into the plant. After its work at Lube Tech, we set up at the Broadway Avenue crossing one more time with the Minneapolis skyline in the distance. The crew has completed more switching at Paper Kalmensen and now heads south to switch industries at Hennepin Avenue.
The RS-27 is now pulling a string of coil cars out of Viking materials back to the main line. After the coil cars are coupled to the rest of the freight cars on the main, the crew moves on to the other industrial lead to switch out cars at Hawkins Chemical. While making its switch moves, the crew must encounter 33rd Avenue.
All work at Hawkins Chemical is done, and now number 52's crew heads down the line to pick up a boxcar at the Eureka Recycling Plant. The 316 pulls out of the plant with one boxcar. Back to the 33rd Avenue crossing, we watch as the train heads back to the main line. On the main line, the train now rolls to the yard after waiting clearance from the BNSF dispatcher to pass Park Junction. While waiting, job number 46, the belt job, has tied on to number 52 for the ride into the yard. Today's belt job was using locomotive number 54. This is a former Burlington Northern B30-7. In our last segment, we get a chance to view one of Minnesota Commercial's Alco C424s at work. The 313, along with slug number T1, which is nicknamed Sluggo, work the yard switching out cars on a daily basis. This is job number 31, known as the Top End Afternoon. Let's sit back and enjoy the sights and sounds of this Alco in the yard. Here, the two units are coming off the roundhouse lead and onto the Hiawatha line lead to pick up cars that were left from the Hiawatha job earlier in the day. Engine number 313 is one of four commercial Alcos that have been totally rebuilt, either by the commercial shops or by outside locomotive shops.
Now in the yard, we watch as the commercial rebuilt C-424 makes several various switch moves. As the crew continues to work, a transfer from the Union Pacific drops off its cars to the commercial. A set of Twin Cities and Western Power returning from Canadian Pacific St. Paul Yard rolls through the commercials yard. The commercial switch crew has picked up a loaded hopper with plastic pellets from the industrial area in southeast Minneapolis. It will place the car on the scale to be weighed before being spotted on a yard track. Once the car is on the scale, 
The conductor weighs the car and prints a wait list. Back to the yard, the crew now moves the freight cars that were brought in by the UP transfer. The crew is finishing up its work, and we take our camera and set up by the Amtrak station for our last Minnesota commercial run-by of our program. Amtrak's Empire Builder stops here with the eastbound number 8 scheduled around 7.30 a.m. and westbound number 7 at 10.30 p.m. The commercial switches for Amtrak when needed. The crew has finished their work and now heads the power back to the roundhouse. Numerous short lines across the country operate with power not seen on many Class 1s anymore. But the Minnesota Commercial is one that has the most unique locomotive roster of any and is a delight for any rail fan to enjoy watching.